Carved stone balls are some of the most uh, enigmatic artefacts that we have in uh, Scottish prehistory. There used to be a lot of debate about how old they were. Some people thought they were Bronze Age, many people thought they were Iron Age, um, and some people even thought they were early Christian. Um, but it was only with radiocarbon dating of sites like Scarab Bray that we realised that these were in fact Neolithic objects. To make a carved stone ball, you don't need very many techniques, and they're techniques that most Neolithic stone workers would have been very familiar with, sort of pecking and grinding. But the actual process requires quite a few stages to go through. At the start, you have to take a raw lump of material, it might be a beach cobble, it might be a, a, a lump of raw rock, and peck that into a sphere. One of the biggest mysteries uh, around carved stone balls is, is what they were actually used for. Over the last 200 years, there have been almost as many theories about how they were used as there are carved stone balls. Were they used for divination? Were they part of a game? Some people have suggested weights, but that theory didn't hold much water because they, 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 they weigh a huge range of different, different weights. More recently, we've seen all sorts of suggestions that they somehow re relate to mathematics, representations of platonic solids. And we see them suggested that they could be memory devices as well, things that hold stories within them, so that as you tell the story, you rotate it, and the, the lines and the, the novels on the surface help you recount that oral history of your society. So there are many different explanations um, for these objects, and the truth is, it could be any one of them. Today we've been making a replica carved stone ball and this is a type of object that comes from Scotland and usually um, found in sites that are dating to the late Neolithic, so the same time that Stonehenge is being built. But these are not objects that are found here at Stonehenge, they only have a distribution in Scotland. But what he's making for us is showing the techniques and the tools and the artwork and the decoration that links this carved stone ball to all the other parts of, of Britain at that time. As a second stage, you have to grind that to, to make it a smoother surface. In Orkney, a number have actually been found in Neolithic contexts. At Scarab Ray, they were found uh, on the floor of Neolithic buildings, uh, which dates them very firmly to the late Neolithic. And recently, in 2013, one was found at the Ness of Brodga, buried under one of the buttresses within one of the buildings, one of the largest buildings on site. Carved stone ball sits in part of the exhibition that talks about the late Neolithic, so the time that Stonehenge is being built. And this particular time we have types of pottery, types of objects and styles of building monuments that are really only found in the British Isles. They're not found at all in continental Europe. This is a time when people are making grooveware pottery that is found all across the British Isles. But they're also doing regional things, so carved stone balls in particular are only found really in a small part of Scotland. So they've got shared ideas, shared religious ideas, um, building similar types of monuments such as stone circles, but they're also still regional traditions and regional trends. Now the next stage is marking out the individual knobs on the surface. Uh, here you have to make a choice about what sort of carved stone ball you're going to make. Most carved stone balls will have six symmetrical knobs, but they come in a wide range of different sizes, uh, different shapes, from having as few as three knobs to having over 200 knobs. And so once you've marked out your knobs, you can begin to peck around those areas and actually define the shape of your carved stone ball and you can keep working it until those knobs are quite different shapes. Some, some carved stone balls have very shallow flat discs, other ones have quite deep rounded knobs. So you have a, you have a lot of working to do with the pecking, very delicate working on that surface. This was something that stone workers potentially did over a series of years, potentially generations. As you pass these balls from one generation to the other, people might have added to the design, reworked them, enhanced them in different ways. 
and you realise it was a time-consuming process, but something that the individual stone worker was really engaging with, um, and something that with each successive generation, these objects became of more significance uh, to the actual person who held them and the person who was working them, the treasured biographies of those generations that have passed before you. Seeing somebody actually make one of these objects and being able to handle a replica in your hands gives you a much better insight into how special and how much time and energy went into making these particular items. We've, we're showing some really precious objects here in the exhibition and they've just been polished for hours on end or they've been carefully constructed from really thin pieces of sheet gold or cast in bronze. And seeing an insight into that craftsmanship and the amount of skill and techniques that people had is really eye-opening and it brings a whole new dimension to seeing the actual object. Once you've achieved the basic shape, you then have to return to grinding it again. And again, very difficult to sort of grind into all those crevices, but you'd probably take a very small piece of sandstone and just work around those bosses and those knobs to, to grind that surface smooth. And that's generally the finish we see. They didn't go to polish the surface like we see with polished stone axes. They just ground it to a smooth finish. And the very final stage is decorating the surface. And only about 40 carved stone balls out of 500 have decorated surfaces. And this involved a very fine incision of lines over the surfaces. We see spiral designs, we see chevrons, we see concentric circles, we see sort of Neolithic designs which are reminiscent of passage grave art that we typically find in Ireland and up the sort of west coast of Britain into Orkney. The carved stone ball that's being recreated today is based on an example found at Old Deer in Aberdeenshire, which is the real centre of uh, the distribution of carved stone balls. Most of them come from the northeast of Scotland. And this one, it's particularly a stunning example because of the decoration on its surface. Um, but we know very little about its discovery. It was found allegedly in a cairn and it first sort of came to the attention of uh, antiquarians in 1874 when it was shown to the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland uh, in Edinburgh and it, it was published the following year. Uh, and it wasn't until 1930 that it was donated to the British Museum. Seeing a carved stone ball recreated really helps me understand that process of manufacturing a carved stone ball a little bit more. It really brings out the number of decisions you have to make during, the, uh, during that process of manufacturing it and how slow that process is. And if we think back to the past, they weren't necessarily manufacturing carved stone balls in one go. This was essentially a process that was drawn out over many years, potentially decades, might even be that things were decorated over generations where you began to change and decorate that carved stone ball in different ways. But what you realise is that the, the level of detail and precision and thought that has to go in that process. And that's what really, you know, it's just wonderful to actually see someone actually making a carved stone ball. If this film has piqued your interest about carved stone balls, you can come along and see it and lots of other amazing objects at the British Museum exhibition here at Stonehenge, which runs until the 21st of April 2019. You can also click on the British Museum video to find out more about the carved stone ball.